follow Rome, one of the greatest civilizations of all time as it degenerated and fractured, is especially painful in view of the parallels to what is happening in America in our own times. Close quote. Yeah. What are the parallels that are most striking to you? The internal loss of confidence, mm -hmm. uh, that we're not prepared to stand up and defend uh, ourselves. I mean, there are all kinds of small signs and large signs, but that we have to accommodate uh, people who move here. You know, the old saying was that when in Rome, do as the Romans do. The new one is, when in Rome, tell the Romans what to do. Mm -hmm. And we're going along with it. Mm. Tom, let me uh, close this out by getting your kind of a broad civilizational view here. Fourth century. Rome's final century is a great power. Of course, it lingers on in Constantinople for another thousand years, but fourth century. We have St. Augustine watching from North Africa as his beloved Rome, where he studied, he's a great uh, product of classical civilization, is sacked. And he responds by averting his gaze from this world and writing the city of God. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he shifts his, his attentions to heaven. Mm -hmm. A few decades later, we have St. Benedict of Nursia up in northern Italy. And he's the founder of great monasteries, attempting to hoard, in a certain sense, what, what learning he can and hoping that later there will be regrowth. And he adopts a motto which translates from the Latin, to pruned, it will grow again. So is Tom Sowell an Augustine who's <laughs> insisting on underlying principles and a kind of eternal values, but actually foresees, believes that what he is observing is total collapse? Mm. Or is he a Benedict hoping for, preparing for, doing what he can to initiate rebirth? Well, I, I'm in an age where I, where I couldn't play either of those roles. <laughs> you look pretty saintly to me, Tom. <laughs> you need new glasses. <laughs> but, but, but uh, no, I, I, I think it was really, uh, but what I meant about the, the pathetic aspect of the uh, aftermath of the collapse of Rome, is, you know, the, these heroic efforts, which, which ultimately paid off, you know, many centuries later. But they were centuries to live through. Imagine, yeah, well, the dark ages were dark. Yes, imagine living in the midst of ruins that you don't even have the knowledge to repair, much less to build. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's what you mean in the passage when you talk about the pathetic attempt to yes. rebuild among the ruins. Yes. The sense that there was a civilization here. And it was all around you. And this is, I think this is part of the reason that the Europe of that, of that era is th thought of as a backward-looking civilization. They had good reason to look backwards because the people before them had achieved far more than they were capable of achieving or even sustaining. Mm. So your fear is that t two decades from now, Americans will be looking back at, re even at the 1950s, a time of growth and American self-confidence and standing up to the Soviets in the Cold War, assuming a large role in the world, that'll be gone and we'll have the feeling that we're pygmies by comparison with... Th there's something of this in Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation. Yes. There's a kind of nostalgia, a feeling that those who came just before us were bigger people somehow. Mm -hmm. They were. They were. You... Yes. All right. Um, last question. If you could offer one sentence of counsel to the President of the United States, what would you say, Tom? Resign. <laughs> no, I can't end the program on that. If you could offer one sentence of counsel to some 20-year-old kid who's watching this webcast, and by the way, when, when we put up a notice that you're going to appear on Twitter or Face, you are a rock star to college kids. I want you to know that. So there's, 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 there's hope. You're, 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 you're reaching people. So one sentence of advice to some sophomore or junior who's watching this today and, and thinks to himself, gee, Dr. Sowell just told me the American which I'm going to grow up will be a shrunken place. No, no. Uh, it's, it's not over till it's over, as Yogi Berra said. And uh, I, I would say to this young person, if we, through some miracle, get through this, please take to heart the lesson of what happens when you vote on the basis of uh, rhetoric and symbolism and instead of using your mind. Uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are unless you stop and think.